The following program is rated PG-16 and may contain material that parents find unsuitable for younger viewers. So parents, watch it first, but be warned, you might get hooked. Alright guys, you're welcome to another interesting, exciting episode of Shots in Shot on R2 TV. I am Ilose Ilo with the flow. And uh, yeah, today I'm here again to bring you, you know, interesting, uh, an interesting short film and a marvelous director. Now I have to say that this, today's director, she is very, very amazing. And when I say amazing, I mean like she's literally down to earth, you know, brilliant, beautiful, and she is a body of amazing creativity. You know, uh, I love listening to her. I love hearing her speak. And I also love, you know, watching her work. She is very good. She was one of the first directors to, you know, work on the Tinsel series. And uh, yeah, for, for a female, she's doing pretty well in the industry, inspired by the later Makai Igwe, may her soul rest in peace. Uh, she's done a lot for herself and she's been around in the industry for 18 years plus. And for me, that is just, that in itself is an achievement. Yeah, we're talking about none other than Mama T. She's popularly known as Mama T, but uh, you guys might see her and not look at her as a Mama T, you know. <laughs> but anyways, basically, you get all that and loads more when we come back. Uh, it's still Shots and Shots in to TV. Don't go anywhere. My name is Tulu Ajayi, and you're watching Short in Short. Well, my name is Topoy Oshin. I'm a director, producer, and sometimes a casting director. I work in television and film uh, presently, and as a whole, within the TV and film industry, I've been doing this for about 18 years. Um, as a director, I've been working for about seven, eight years. Outside film, um, what I'd have liked to be would have been a painter. As a child, I had very artistic tendencies. I've always been an artist. Um, I did a lot of singing, but most importantly, what gave me the most peace was drawing and painting. It definitely is something I'm coming back to. Uh, probably let's call it maybe my three-year plan. I probably acted in one or two plays, maybe in church, you know, or something, but it wasn't, I didn't look into performance or even film, you know, as where I could possibly end up. Um, and my journey there actually was some sort of an accident because I was um, in the university, I just lost an admission after losing two years in the University of Illori and then I had to come back to Lagos. And what seemed immediately available at the Lagos State University then was theatre arts. I didn't have an idea what it was, but I just wanted to get back into school and uh, make up for the lost years, you know, and basically get started again. So I got into that and um, started studying theatre arts. Just as I expected, we started reading books and I was happy. Um, I was allotted a character, I read it well, my lecturer was pleased and I realized I was reading the same character for about three weeks. I didn't realize that we were having some sort of reading and rehearsal. And then about the third week she said, when you're coming tomorrow, come with your work clothes, we're going to be rehearsing the play. And I said, what play? And she said, oh yeah, we're presenting the play, um, it's a convocation play for the school. I said, you mean I'm going to act? She said, yes. I said, no, that's not the deal. She said, no, we well, have to, if you don't, you're going to fail. You know, I tried to put up an argument and stuff with her, but she wasn't going to hear any of it. She said, but you read well, you act well. I said, I know on paper and behind closed doors, I can't stand in front of people and perform. She said, well, who says so? You never know until you try. So she basically blackmailed me with failing and I didn't want to fail. So I said, okay, I probably die doing this, but I have to do it for um, the marks. So then I got to do my first quote and unquote professional acting work, aside from the one or two I'd done in church. Um, the play was Dile Dilemma of a Ghost, and I played Eulalie. Uh, the character was American, who smoked. 
and this was given to a church girl who was very shy. So one way or the other, I found that um, I was able to lose myself. I missed all the one million butterflies on stage. Um, and hence, I got into acting. Um, I got some attention from my lecturers, some of who were Shola Fosudo and Co. And then they started giving me referrals to go for auditions um, within Nollywood, you know. So I started going out, doing voiceover, uh, trying to do some acting work here and there. For me then, it was just, okay, they say I do it well, so, you know, let's see how this goes. I can't exactly say no to them. So I started doing that. and right from school and then by the time I was out of school it naturally was what I continued with. I mean it brought me some money so I you know did films, did a lot of stage play, did a lot of dancing and all of that. Someone introduced me to Amaka Igwe. She was at the time looking for a particular um, character, um, actor to play character in one of her new movies. And I went in to read for the role and I got the role. And during the rehearsal, we discussed um, the character, character background and the movie and all of that. And at the end of the rehearsal, she asked me to stay back and asked me if I ever thought of being a director. I said, where is that coming from? She said, I said, why do you say that, ma'am? She said, well, I think you'll be a good director. I said, what gives you that um, Thought. She said, well, I have instincts and I can tell and I know that you are a director. I said, but how can you know that? I'm just an actress and I'm a very shy one at that. She said, it doesn't matter. I know you're going to be a director. If you're not ready now, whenever you're ready, come to me. I will train you if you need training, but I believe that this is what you should do. And I thought, okay, she said this. How about, you know, giving a thought to it and see where it goes? So I laid it upon myself to get books on directing, um, started watching a lot more movies, started studying movies, started going online and doing my personal study and all of that. Somewhere in there I got sucked into the whole thing. At the time I was pregnant so I had a lot of time on my hands to not to do anything but lay on the sofa so I used my sofa time to study. And so after I had you know, the baby I was pregnant with then, I went back into the film industry where I practiced a little before then and then I started talking to directors I had worked with and told them, you know, I'm actually interested in directing. Some of them outrightly laughed. Some of them felt I wasn't serious. Some of them felt because I had been away having a baby, then um, I'd been discouraged by not having jobs, and then I just wanted to work. I said, no, I sincerely am interested in this and I want to explore it. So the few ones that took me serious, people like uh, Farouk Lasaki um, invited me on then, and on every commercial he shot, he would always, you know, invite me first to observe and then after a while I started you know taking up the role of the assistant director watching how it was done and all of that same with Mr. Femi Odubemi, um, Austin Awulon you know some of the men and people who encouraged me and patiently taught me Ruke Amata um, I was assistant director on Ruke Amata series bachelors back then so um, I got into this you know bit by bit slowly got more intrigued. Somewhere along the line, I totally forgot that I had an acting career and that I was supposed to be acting as well. I was very overwhelmed by trying to understand directing and putting a movie together. And, you know, things kind of worked on from there. I moved on to Apprentice Africa and then I moved on to Tinsel and then I moved on to shooting my own short films and then feature and, you know, Everything else is history, basically. That kind of is my journey in, in a nutshell, if you'd call it that, and, and that's how I find myself where I am today. And a short film is a whole lot more than a feature film will ever be. And if I really had a choice, I probably would just be a short film or short form director because it holds within the few minutes that you see it a lot of expression and a lot of art and a lot of um, symbolism and messages and stuff. By and large, most of the time, short film is usually just art. It's you have the challenge of saying everything you want to say within those few minutes. So invariably, you find that there's a lot of symbolism, there's a lot of metaphor, there's a lot of, um, you know, veiling and stuff in, in, in short films, you, you are able to um, use all those elements that you probably might not get to use in a feature length movie or you could choose to use it if you want to, but the challenge is bigger and greater. 
you have the challenge of getting someone interested and hooked onto that movie and getting the message in a very short time and then your short film is anywhere from zero minutes to some people 20, 25, 30 minutes. It's a really short time to put a story together and put a message together and put a theme together, you know, in that, in that short form and in the short space of time. The first thing to identify as a short filmmaker is the fact that short films, firstly and foremost, are not commercial. You have to be an artist who is trying to say something to be a short filmmaker successfully. And that's pretty much where I started. I was at the point where I had shot television for quite a while, I had shot Tinsel for quite a while, and I, was, I knew that there was, you know, the art in me that I wanted to express. I didn't want to keep doing, you know, just the, the TV thing, which has its own standard and its own style. And, you know, I wanted to say something in a poetic way. That's also what um, shorts are sometimes. It's, it's, it's poetry. So if I were to compare a short film to a feature length film, I'd say a feature length film is a normal conversation why a short film is poetry. So these are the first elements that a short filmmaker must understand, the fact that shorts are predominantly pure art. That really is what, what a short film is. It's telling a story within a limited um, amount of time. So that's the worst part was, <laughs> was born on a lazy Saturday morning um, in bed, a morning of what ifs, what if, what if, what if, and this is how, you know, the story basically came together. We had a couple of premises and then we put together all the what ifs and it got more exciting as time went on. I was like, ah, by all means, let's write this, you know, and then, you know, we kind of developed it into a story and a script and I think I shot it probably a month or, yeah, probably a month or a few weeks after this development took place. We went through about four or five drafts within that space of time because the, the excitement was suddenly high before I eventually shot it. It basically highlights the life of a young man who has to witness indirectly domestic violence. And this is the question intervene or not, get involved or not, get help or not. And he had so many several chances to help his neighbor. You know, he knew this was going on. What was his take? And it was important for me to say this and to talk about this because particularly here in Nigeria, we don't like to think, we don't like to fight, we don't like to worry. And we basically like to mind our own business. And this is what I wanted to talk about. So many things are happening around us, so many ills you know, are happening around us, but we would rather just sit quiet and comfortable in as much as it doesn't come to us, in as much as it doesn't affect any member of our family or it doesn't affect us personally, we just say, mm, it's their business. Um, I shot Till Death Do Us Part in just one day. Um, it's written in such a way that it all happens in one location, but within the, the one location, within the story time, um, a lot happens within the period of the one location. So it's this man at different times and the action keeps coming to him, you know, in, in his house. And, you know, that's basically how we follow the story. So I shot this in an entire day, like from early in the day to late in the day. Um, challenges we faced, first and foremost, funding. I didn't have any money, but I was just passionate about making this film. So. I basically was the production designer, I was the set dresser, I was the wardrobe mistress, I was the makeup artist. <laughs> I had to do all these things myself, um, coupled with directing, I also produced. Um, the only thing I didn't do was write Still Death Doors, but um, I was the props person. I had to go out and buy all the props, put them together, you know, and, you know, follow everything through and blah, blah, blah. So I'd say the, the biggest problem I had is the problem of every indie filmmaker, which is funding and then wanting to make it happen, still trying to get your movie made despite the odds. 
um, you know, to get it done. And I had an incredible crew and everybody, everybody was amazing. The support was great. And the movie did very well. We got, a, uh, you know, a lot of nominations, got a couple of awards. We won the best film at the Abuja Film Festival. Um, we've screened it in different places. We've got really good um, reviews and the message has hit home. And, you know, I basically I'm very happy that the intent was followed through all the way to the end. All right, so that was Tokwe Oshin, a.k.a. Mama T. Yeah, uh, she's very easy on the eye, very easy going pers person. She has a beautiful personality. But then when it comes to her work, she's iron lady. That's why they call her Mama T. Uh, but basically, she, she, she's a pretty chill woman. I actually met her at an audition two years ago when I was going, when I wanted to, you know, start in Sugar. Uh, and then I think sometime this year I also met her again at an audition. Uh, for those of you that think we don't go to auditions, we go. <laughs> That's how we get the job. But basically, uh, I met her at those different auditions and she was always, you know, very, you know, um, excited, uh, very happy to help, let me put it that way. And uh, yeah, I, I like her, basically. I'm a big fan of her work, uh, very big fan of her person as well. Uh, anyways, her short film, um, to Till Death Do Us Part, is coming up right now, so you guys should uh, check this out. And I'm pretty sure you guys would enjoy it. And always think to yourself, whenever something is happening around you, should you really, you know, help out or should you back down? I say help out because you never know who you're helping. Okay? So check out Till Death Do Us Part, directed by Tokwe Oshin. Enjoy. John settled down on the sofa to watch his favorite show. Back off. How dare you ask me to back off? I will not back off until I'm sure you did it. Then ask your son. Oh, I'm doing better than that. Because I Soon we hear shouts of an argument between a man and a woman. For over 10 years? And your bed for almost as long. Oh. We're back to that, eh? I'm not giving it to you. I'm not giving it to you. Six months, Saji. I'm not giving it to you. If she's not out of I'm not giving you. I'm not giving you. Let me out. Let me out. Shut down that station and liquidate all the assets. You will destroy your own company just for revenge. Saji, dear. You have no idea how far I will go for revenge. I will not back up until I'm sure you did it. Then ask your son. Oh, better than that. You will destroy your own company just for the You, I can't continue like this. Please. Sit down. I'm sorry. I can't help you. You shouldn't even be here. No, 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 you can. He beat me for the slightest reasons. Today is because I didn't give him the password to my email address. Please. Sit down, bring up right now. Or I'm going to bring down your freaking down. Madam, please, you're going to have to leave. Please, please do something. I can't take the beating anymore. Please. I will.
few days later, John comes back from a date with Nkechi and is in a very happy mood as he flops on the sofa, enjoying the warmth of the sunlight streaking through the gap between window blinds as he basks in the euphoria of her having accepted his marriage proposal. He was at peace with the universe, enjoying a cosmic connection with life itself. But alas, it was to be short-lived. Juliet, Mrs. Whatever you are called, I don't want you coming here again. Your husband is a dangerous person. He has a gun. What? He has a gun. He has a gun. He showed me. He told me he's going to kill me one of these days. Uh, look, he's not going to kill you. I think he's just threatening you. But you people need to sort your issues out. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not getting any peace here. Please do something. I think he's really going to kill me one of these days. Please. Can you please don't say, please say that I'll come in there. Please, don't send me out, please. Don't send me out, don't send me out, please. He's going to kill me. I'm sorry, but I cannot interfere in your domestic affairs. You have to leave. He's going to kill me. I'm telling you. I'm sorry. He's going to be to something. He's really going to kill me. I'm telling you. He's going to kill me. John did not hear anything from them for the next few days and started to wonder if they had finally worked things out. But he was too preoccupied with meeting Kechi's parents to really care. He has killed her. Do the 
Let me see what could put me in the singing mood. Okay, I'll probably just sing one sentence. And though love sometimes hurts, I still put you first. And we'll make this thing work, but I think we should take it slow. We're just ordinary people. We don't know which way to go. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Beyond, um, beyond your dream to be a director or a filmmaker, you should also get practical and learn the craft. Make out time to learn everything that you can about filmmaking, about directing. It's not going to be handed to you on a platter of gold because you're a woman. Don't expect people to say, oh, she's a woman, you know, we're going to help her. No, fight for it. Actually know your business, know what it's about. Read up, read up, read up. Go to schools if you have to, take workshops if you have to. Watch movies and break it down if, to, if you have to. Understudy people if you have to and ask questions. And the third thing is go out and shoot. The only way you can be a filmmaker is by having a film. And don't be scared. Um, shoot out all your bad films, like a friend of mine said, and then you get to start making your good films. But if you sit and keep second guessing yourself, you will never make one film, and then you will never be a filmmaker, and then you will only talk about film and not, you know, be a director. So get up and get doing and get going and achieve your dreams. My name is Tokwe Oshi and I'm a filmmaker. Keep watching Shorts in Short on R2 TV. All right, guys, so I am rounding up for today. It has been Shorts in Short on R2 TV. This is going to be like the shortest outro I'm going to have because I will tell you to follow us on all our social media platforms. R2 TV on Facebook, R2 underscore TV on Twitter, and R2 TV on Instagram. Follow me at Master Banks on Instagram and Twitter. Yeah, so from myself, Elo, say hello, the flow, and from everyone in the RCTV studio, this has been Shots and Shots on RCTV. See you guys next week.